<laughs> Welcome to Toronto and to this biennial convention. As we heard from Dan, our world, of course, is very different from what it was when we gathered two years ago in San Diego. We have been in an economic crisis unprecedented since the Great Depression, and our congregations are struggling with the effects of that crisis. The good news is that our congregational leadership is very wise. None of us saw the crisis coming, but once it happened, our synagogues moved very quickly to do what they had to do. Professor Jonathan Sarner wrote in RJ Magazine recently that during the Depression, many congregations were paralyzed, but not this time. It has been very difficult and painful, but our synagogues have struggled with budgets and programs and made the changes needed to keep our synagogues strong. This is a very good time, therefore, for a biennial. Much of the next few days will be spent sharing experiences and ideas on how we can best cope with these realities and drawing strength from each other in the process. Our union, too, is undergoing profound change. With this biennial, we enter into the third major era of union history. The union was founded in 1873. For the next 75 years, it occupied a few rooms in an office building in Cincinnati and its primary work was to support the Hebrew Union College and assist reform religious schools. In the mid-20th century, the modern union came into being. Its architect was Maurice Eisendrath, who became president, as we saw, after serving as rabbi of Holy Blossom Temple here in Toronto. He created the building blocks of union activity, NIFTI summer camps, Israel programs, the Religious Action Center. And foreseeing an explosion of growth in reform synagogues, he put in place a network of 14 regional offices as the primary vehicle to serve these congregations. A few years ago, we saw that the time had come to rethink how we do our work. After all, nearly 60 years had passed, so we went back to first principles and asked why this union exists. We invited our, our congregational leaders to tell us what they thought, and they did. They appreciated the regional offices, which were helpful, supportive, and wonderful at responding to crisis. But our leaders were now looking for different things. In dealing with their problems, they wanted a high level of specialized expertise that would be available immediately. They wanted, with our help, to spend more time talking to each other and learning from each other. They wanted better use of technology and less reliance on written materials. They wanted someone to know them well and to guide them through the union's offerings. And so we began work on all of this, and then the financial crisis hit, and we worked much faster. In a six-month period, professionals and lay leaders building on these principles reimagined what the union could be and put in place a new structure. It involved deep cuts and real pain to people that we care very much about. But it is a better structure than what we had. It is forward-looking, fiscally responsible, and in many ways daring and creative. The building blocks remain the same, nifty summer camps, Israel programs, the RAC, the URJ Press, Torah commentaries, RJ Magazine, Taste of Judaism, and so forth. But as we enter this third era, we have created a structure that makes other things, technology, high-level expertise, lay leader support groups, far more central than they have been. I'm not going to give you all the details. If you don't know them, you'll learn them this week. And obviously, this is still a work in progress. But I will say that we are very excited by these developments and very encouraged by what we have already seen. Lay leaders and staff are working feverishly to bring this new union into being. And as we enter this third era in the union's history, I am absolutely confident that we will, with your help, emerge stronger than we have ever been. Now let me conclude with a few words of thanks to you. Sometimes I wonder why anyone comes to these biennials. The expense is considerable, the disruption to lives is significant, the daily routine is exhausting. Every time we do this, and especially now when money is tight, I wonder if people aren't just going to come to their senses and stay home. But you don't. You come. You spend the money. You make the schlep. You eat the hotel food. 
and you don't complain overly much. <laughs> Why do you do this? When I ask people what most tell me in their own way is that they are Jews of the synagogue who know that effort is required to do Judaism right and who want the support of others who share their devotion, you come because the work of the synagogue is aggravating, difficult work. No matter how engaging and empowering our synagogues may be, there's no escaping the self-important macher who makes a mess of the membership committee and the annoying nudnik of a board member who says the same stupid thing at board meeting after board meeting. <laughs> you, come, you come for tips on how to handle this, to commiserate with others in the same situation, and most important, to be renewed, refreshed, and inspired to take on the battles that lie ahead. You come to sing, to pray, and to study with the best teachers that this movement has to offer, and because you know that what you will get here is Jewish learning that is not childish or skin deep. You come to hope and to dream, and since hoping and dreaming is a collective activity, at least for Jews, you see this biennial as a means to give voice to this message. We hope you will not be disappointed and that you'll find what you are looking for this week. We hope that you will enjoy your taste of the new union, I, for one, am confident that you will. Thank you for being with us and joining with us as our new era begins. Thank you for making the trip and for your leadership. May you all have a wonderful, productive, inspiring, Torah-filled, and prayer-filled biennial.